High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the Champions Cup, Ben Francis Walker Cup, which team are win the championship this season. Urban areas schoolboy football in Jamaica was shaken to its core on Saturday as 31-time champions Jamaica College failed to make the semi-finals of the Manning Cup for the first time since 2012. I, I don't know why Lance is doing that. You can't see it, but Lance is doing something right now that he shouldn't be doing. Now, <laughs> I wonder why. I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a moment, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, can I just continue with the script, please? please? Yes, thank you. So JC, who are reigning Manning and Champions Cup winners, drew one all with St. George's College, falling short of the three points needed to reach the last four of the Manning Cup. This means the school where football powerhouses will be unable to defend both of their crowns and can now only vie for the Walker Cup. Here is head coach Davian Ferguson and how Saturday's encounter played out. Created a lot of chances. Even the last minute we had a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper half a ricochet, which we should have scored. But such is football, yeah? You, you win some, you lose some, and this one today is one that we didn't win. We came out here today with a plan. We created enough chances, um, but we just didn't put them away. We have had some issues up top, and it showed here too. The judges came, they came with a resilient spirit, um, and they deserve to go through. Yeah, on the flip side, St. George's College returned to the semi-final for the first time in five years, and their coaching staff was elated. You know, I must say credit to uh, Jamaica College. Something we're prepared for. We prepared today that we're going to suffer a lot today. It's a very, it's a very um, quality team, JC, not taking none away from it. Um, but it's a case of defense versus attack today. I thought we defense totally today, and credit must be given to um, Dijor in goal today. He was fantastic between the sticks today. I think he made a difference um, for us today. Yeah, Marcel Gale, the coach of St. George's College, never burnt his bell, the technical director. Our in-house football analyst, Lejay Williams, joins us in studio. Um, good afternoon and welcome, Lejay. By the way, Mr. Prediction Guru, you got it wrong. You said that Jamaica College would get through and that Neverbertis Bell better celebrated as much as possible on Friday um, for his birthday, suggesting that he wouldn't have anything to celebrate no, 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 on, no, no, on Saturday. No. It, it was inferred. It was inferred. But, but you, you didn't say that, Liz, but it, it was inferred. But you, you have to be Can honest. we take that tag away from him until the, he starts getting it right? Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I'll soon get to that. But first, Lance Whitaker. <laughs> Chapo, you <laughs> in your in your opening presentation, because I know where you stand on this issue. Yes, it was conspicuous, in my opinion, the way you said Jamaica College failed to reach yeah. the semi-finals. The emphasis and the vigor with which you read was was startling for me, but not surprising given the fact that it is what you wanted to happen. It is what I predicted to happen, and also. <laughs> You you said vigor, yes. I there never heard no you vigor. say. You want you, you, you want to re you want our producers to replay the presentation. You read the T and you read for script. You didn't say one like yeah, that. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Let's talk about the football. Lizzie, how did Jamaica College not win that game on Saturday because they had all the opportunities in the world and just couldn't put the game away? Well, their head coach summed it up perfectly. I think he said that they were having attacking issues all season. I'm not 100% behind him on that in, uh, in that instance because they scored so many goals. But I think it was a similar thing where once again last year they got away with it because they, um, they put in Ziminis towards the end and that really added a, more of an attacking flair towards the end of the season. But I think we see a similar thing this season where we're not seeing any JC players score a boatload of goals like how we see Brian Burkett scoring for St. George's, some of the players for St. Andrew Technical, even some of the players for Mona. So I think they were sharing the goals around because they didn't have that out-and-out -out number nine. Giovanni Taylor didn't really announce himself like we would have hoped that he would have this season. And then you mentioned the chances. There was chance after chance after chance. I counted eight clear when I say clear, I mean eight clear-cut goal-scoring opportunities that they didn't take. So I think Jamaica College were extremely unfortunate. Um, a, lot of, a lot of criticism, I think, would go towards their coach, Davian Ferguson, after this loss. But I think if you watch this game, 
the only thing a coach can do is put his team in advantageous positions to score some of these goals. And he definitely had a plan. I think he outcoached St. George's. By the end of the day, if your team doesn't take the chances, there's nothing you can do about that. And then especially because Dijon Davis, Dijon Davis in that St. George's goal was quite spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> the, it, everything just went against Jamaica College on the day, but it has to be said, they put themselves in this position to even need the three points in this do or die game, this do or die situation. So I think at the end of the day, they can't blame anyone but themselves, but it's definitely a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, when you look at the chances, and you said you counted about eight opportunities, um, clear-cut opportunities that they failed to capitalize on, but we're talking about different players who, 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 who were missing these opportunities. I think Howell, there was one for Howell. Um, just trying to remember correctly now, there was one for a Marley King. Yeah, as Marley well, King missed a couple. If not two. Um, the number 20 had a, a clear header. Yeah, um, their, that, left, their left back missed a few, that chance at the end, the, the one that... From David, Lawrence. Yeah, exactly, Lawrence. So the, there, was so, there were so many chances. It, it, it's, really, it's not something that you can really quantify. If you watch the game, then you would understand, because I, I was in the St. George's section of the game and I was there with the St. George's fans. They were nervous all the way through. A, a lot of complaints, a couple of altercations breaking out, people saying take off Burkett, take off Reed, they're not doing anything, take off Zabir, their best players. There's that type of panic in the St. George's ranks. But I think St. George's in the end actually, I think they defended really well. As I mentioned, their goalkeeper was fantastic. So St. George's, I'm not going to say that they don't deserve to go to the next round, but JC has to rule those opportunities because they're definitely a better side. I think that without a doubt, they're a top four team in the Manning Cup. Yeah, your report card on the way St. George's College approached that game on Saturday. Well, you see, football is a mental game. St. George's came into the game knowing that, okay, we only need a draw to go through. So just after that, when they come into the game, they are going to, and they know the threat that Jamaica College have as well. So when they started playing, they started the game really brightly, actually. Mm -hmm. But then... Once Jamaica College got into their flow, they can see a couple of chances. They're saying to themselves now, all right, hold on. We need to calm things down. We need to try and see if we can ride out this storm. And then especially now, JC missed all of those chances in the first half. And then St. George's College get that penalty. They get that penalty to go up. After that, it's just all hands to the pump for them. They're just trying to defend that, which isn't usually a St. George's College strong suit. Yeah. But they did it. They, they rode out the storm and all credit to them. Their coach spoke, their coaches spoke after the game about how the toughness of the unit has really improved and I have to agree with them. Yeah, how about Brian Burkett? Because there is no the school of thought that he doesn't come to the party in these massive games. So he has scored a lot of goals, 39 goals now in his under-19 schoolboy football career. But I keep hearing when the game is big, he doesn't perform as well. Your thoughts? Well, on a, I, on a usual scale, I, I don't like to subject attackers to that school of thought mm -hmm. because if J Jamaica College is dominating the game in all aspects, the midfield, St. George's midfield struggled yesterday and I, I don't want it to I'm going to say it like how Chapo said failed they struggled on Saturday they were completely outrun completely outclassed in all aspects and Brian Burkett plays in a pseudo false nine striker position in this Jamaica College 3-5-2 5-3-2 as it was on in Saturday St. George's College it's for St. George's College I beg yes. your pardon so if he's struggling to get the ball so often we saw him drop deep into defensive positions deep in midfield to get on the ball so if he's struggling to get on the ball i can't say that he didn't impact the game because at the end of the day when he got his chance he got one chance for the whole game yeah. it was a penalty he did really well to dispatch it and he worked so hard for his team so i, I i'm not with the school of th thought to say that he goes in big games and like how we're on the, the the subject i think that there's unnecessary pressure placed on brian burkett as well because at the end of the day, yes, he's a fantastic player, but I think, and I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure, maybe it's because he isn't playing in an attacking position anymore, but I think all of the pressure on the St. George's unit, player-wise, should fall on the hands or the, the feet, at the feet of Adrian Reed Jr., because Adrian Reed Jr. is a player that has played in the Link Cup final for Cavalier. 
the Jamaica Cup, fi Jamaica Premier League final for Cavalier started both of those games. He's the captain of this team, and in all estimation, in my opinion, he's the best player of this team. He's playing in that extremely important defensive midfield position. Yeah. He's the one who's supposed to dictate tempo. He has been playing well, yes, but I think yesterday he may have struggled in, or a Saturday, I beg your pardon, he may have struggled in some organizational ways. Mm -hmm. So I think if Jama if St. George's are to overcome Mona mm -hmm. and overcome whoever they were to face in the final, say for instance, they were to come up against a Heidel with Ronaldo Barrett, Adrian Reed has to be that linchpin in those games against those quality midfielders. It's interesting that you say that quickly because I actually thought Adrian Reed had a good game on Saturday and I think was a large part of the reason St. George's College were able to hold off Jamaica College despite the, the many opportunities that they got. So I, I, it's, it's interesting it's, 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 to hear you put I'm it not like saying, that. I'm not saying that he had a bad game. I'm okay. saying that he's better than what he's he He's better produced. than what he showed. And in addition to that, because I mentioned the mentality of the team. Yeah, that's a when massive playing, compliment, by the way, because I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, I, I think that in terms of the mentality of the team, when you're playing in that position, especially if when you're playing in front of a back three, a younger, you have wing backs are trying to stay as wide as possible. He has to be that linchpin, in, especially in terms of in possession stuff. Too often you saw when St. George's got the ball, he was, a, he was a bit scared from them. They just wanted to hoof it long. No one there to take responsibility in the middle. That's his role. No, I'm not saying that he didn't defend stoutly. Yes. He didn't organize the defense well and shield the back line well at times. But I'm saying in possession, the game could have been much easier for yeah. a St. George's College team that we know that they are adept at playing the ball well if he could have taken more control in those instances. And I think he's going to have to if they're going to overcome in the semi-final, in the Champions Cup, and just generally going forward for St. George's College. Yeah, yeah I listened to everything that you've said so far the struggles, the positives with the team. Can this St. George's College team go all the way? Well, at this point, I, I think that all four of the teams left in the Manning Cup are in a similar playing field. I think I, I don't want to be that guy. I really don't want to be that guy because be I know a lot of the, the fans of the other teams are going to come at me. But I think Mona withstanding, I think, two of the three best teams in this Manning Cup competition are out. And I know people are going to say, OK, they went through the quarterfinal round and they didn't make it through and it was three games that they had to get through and they couldn't do it. But we know how football is. We know football is round. We know the ball is round. St. Andrew Technical and Jamaica College, despite of how boring it may seem because they've been dominant for so long, they were two of the three best teams in this competition. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that the other teams don't deserve to be where they are because at the end of the day, the other teams had to beat them. But, but with that being said, I think that the rest of the teams, quality-wise, I think can have comfort in the fact that I think that all of them are on a similar level. Although I would put Mona as the favourites, yeah. I think now is the time that we're going to see a lot of key players. I mentioned Adrian Reed, I mentioned Brian Burkett, I mentioned Ronaldo Barrett. I, I, of course, we have the Mona players as well. I think it's now KC. I think it's now we're going to see some real quality shine through because it's going to have to be individuals and maybe some excellent coaching performances as well that determines the winner in this Manning Cup. Yeah, I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, that what you just heard for the last minute and a half was the prediction guru struggling after <laughs> getting it badly wrong at the weekend. By the way, the semi-final lineup will see Mona taking on St. George's College and Heidel will play Kingston College in the other semi-final. And by the way, the last time, which was the first time Heidel made the semi-finals of the Manning Cup, they got all the way to the final, by the way, was 2012, which was the last time Jamaica College did not make the semi-finals of the Manning Cup before now. So it seems as if you can't get both Heidel and JC and who beat in them? the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. And who beat them in that final? St. George's College won that final. And that's still a possibility, so let's see. Yes, we could have 2012 all over again. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll be talking about the Da Costa Cup. Yeah, stay with us.